Hello there. Wow. Perfect. Wonderful. Well done. Okay. What's up everybody, the Nintendo Beast here, back in Animal Crossing here on the Nintendo GameCube. Uh, logging in, time has already been corrected, we are good to go, good to jump into the game here. Um, so yeah, it's another day, I think we're gonna be weeding a lot, I th unfortunately. Uh, it's not the most fun probably to watch, it's also not the most fun to play. Uh, but there are a lot of weeds I still have to pick, and I think... I think I started over in this area, so I'm going to do a really quick... What is going on? Wait, where did I start? I'm sorry. Where did I actually start? Because it feels like there are a lot of weeds here, and I definitely plucked... I'm, like, very confident that I plucked all of these, and I'm getting kind of pissed. Is this the number of weeds that come up on a weekly basis? No. Okay, we're, we're fine. I'm sorry. Got a little... I mean, there are enough to be annoying, quite frankly. Um, too many weeds. So, Animal Crossing on GameCube is just too many weeds. Ooh, what is this? Oh, yeah, kites. That's right. Um, out of curiosity, did I get all the bugs? Yeah, I got all the bugs. I, just, I saw a ladybug over there, and I know I was struggling to find snails um, for the longest time. I feel like I don't... I feel like I didn't complete my fossil exhibit, but I could be wrong on that. So I'm gonna dig up fossils as I go too, just to just for good measure, in case I need to. Um, but check this out. We got some fans going. I think that's because it's May, so this is like the new uh, what's happening in May. There's there's those, They're like wind socks. Um. Yeah, I was really afraid that... I, I saw a handful of weeds, and I was really afraid that, like, a crap ton of them popped up. Um, or worse, that it didn't save last week. Uh, the progress that I did make in ripping up weeds, and that might have been the case. Or, I thought that was the case. Uh, what is the case is, like, this is actually how many weeds pop up in the course of a week. So, if you're not signing on every single day this is what happens and that's kind of frustrating and i think that's kind of why i stopped caring so much oh gulliver's here um maybe i'll address that if i have time um but yeah so i, I feel like oh there's more cool i feel like that's probably the reason the main reason i stopped caring so much about the weeds in this game before I mean, obviously, I stopped playing for a long period of time, and that's when the weeds really kicked in. But I think, for the most part, um, I kind of gave up, specifically in this Animal Crossing game. Uh, I kind of gave up on hoping to keep up with weeds, because they just grow so quickly. It's a bit much. It's a bit much to, like, manage, especially when you're not playing every single day. If I could, If I could get paid to play Animal Crossing every single day... And maybe someday here on the channel that'll be a reality, but I mean, I, it doesn't it doesn't pay. It doesn't pay the bills to play Animal Crossing every single day. <laughs> Although when I was a kid, I definitely did play Animal Crossing City Folk like every single day. Um, wow, well, two buried items right next to each other. Uh, dig this up. Little dragonfly buzzing past me. I think, uh, this is so fun, though. Like, these are just, like, little tiny details, right? Like, these fans or, um, windsock things. Kites. Kite? I think they're, they call them kites in this game. I don't know. Um, but I just, that's so fun. And that's, like, probably the biggest reason I love Animal Crossing so much, or as much as I do, um, is because it is a game that's in real time, and it, and it kind of, changes with the times and like the time of year and obviously with like the bugs and everything but also just you know with decorations and the seasons and all the different things um it's just like i feel like life as an adult life can become just really monotonous right like holidays start to be a little bit less exciting than they were or than you remember them as a kid uh, i think everybody probably has some kind of memory of like uh 
some holiday tradition or birthday traditions or, or something of that nature where uh, like as a kid it's just really they're like really fond memories you know what I mean and then you become an adult and like you don't really have birthday parties like where people just bring you all kinds of gifts and if you do you're a child uh, <laughs> but like you know you're not having an office birthday party where everybody you invite everybody in your office to uh, to come to a skating rink or something you know what I mean um, but yeah, I mean, I think Animal Crossing, like, I think life as an adult, and this is, I guess this is like how, how Animal Crossing still applies to like adulthood, right? Because I loved the game when I was a kid. I loved like holiday breaks, like uh, winter break from school. Um, over the winter holidays, I would come home and I would just be like, yes, I have a week off of school and I could just play Animal Crossing City Folk all day, every day. Um, but as an adult, like, I don't know, it, it kind of gets monotonous. Life life as a whole gets monotonous. You get into, like, this kind of workflow where it's Monday through Friday or whatever your work schedule is. Um, and, like, you know, the, the magic of holiday is, like, now it's, like, instead of getting gifts and, like, being carefree for, like, Christmas, for example, or for your birthday or whatever. Let's talk about, let's say Christmas. Um, instead of, like, being, like not worrying necessarily about the money or whatever you're just getting gifts and showered in gifts because you're a kid and family showers you in gifts and whatnot uh then you become an adult and suddenly you're like buying people gifts and you're trying to figure out uh budgeting for like oh ugh, it's the holidays that means i have to get every single person in my family a gift and that means i have to figure out what they would want and i barely even know my family members and at least on like a gift giving level you know uh and then beyond that you have to worry about like oh barely cover rent this month and now i have at the end of the month i have christmas and i have to give people gifts and whatever and it kind of like it loses the magic because you become an adult and you deal with the the adult aspects of these things right um and not just holidays but like year round like things that used to be so simple and exciting as a kid you grow up and you realize that there's like financial pressures and like all kinds of pressures that go around those things and it's it suddenly is like it loses some of the magic because now you're an adult and you know you lose the the fairy tale aspects of it uh as you get older and you gain the financial burden and the oh now i have to like when you're a kid it's like oh yeah i'm going my parents are taking me over to my grandma's house to you know celebrate the holidays and now as an adult, it's like, oh, God, I'm married. So that means there's two different sides of the family. There's her side and my side. And then we have to see them all. And we have to make sure nobody gets, you know, less time than the other because people care about that when you're I, – I, it's ridiculous. But then all of a sudden, you're just like, oh, okay, well, I have off work this weekend. We can go see your parents this weekend, my parents next weekend. And, and you know, it just gets stressful and then like the magic is gone. And suddenly as an adult, you're just like, oh, I just can't wait for the holidays to be over. You know what I mean? Like as a kid, things like Christmas, like I, you wait all year round for Christmas because it's like free, free gifts, free gifts and, you know, off school and uh, f good food and all these things. And then you become an adult and uh and it's none of those things nothing is free anymore nothing is done for you anymore nobody drives you any anywhere anymore uh and you have to like schedule people into your life more and you have to think about that kind of stuff and and care about that kind of stuff and uh and i think animal crossing all this sounds probably just like incredibly depressing um but i'm getting around to it was a bit of a it was an introduction all of that to say um all of that to preface the fact that animal crossing i think for me at least, it kind of taps into that nostalgia or that n nostalgic magic of like holidays and things. Like in Animal Crossing, when I log on on Christmas or uh, the night Jingle comes to town, I don't owe anybody anything. I don't need to go anywhere. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't need to get gifts for anybody. I don't need to, um, I, don't, I don't need to think about you know, making sure I see everyone or whatever. It's just the simplicity and the relaxation of, like, it's snowing. You hear the little jingle bells playing in the soundtrack. Um, this happy reindeer is walking around giving out gifts, asking for nothing in return. And it's just kind of the simplicity of that. It, it kind of re-engages the magic of what, you know, holidays used to be. And it, even seasons. So, like, for example, this all 
this whole conversation spun off of me seeing those kites or those windsock fan things. Uh, I'm not, again, I'm not sure. I think there's like there's like a kite festival or something. I think that's what they're called. Um, but yeah, it's like seeing those. It's like oh, it's May. Oh, like time goes by when you're an adult and you're working uh, working a lot, like I am. Um, or even just like a regular job, you know, time goes by so quickly, um, and you can't really slow down and, you know, enjoy a lot of things a lot of the time as much as you could when you were a kid. And Animal Crossing is a way to be like, oh, wait, oh, it's May. That's right. It's May. Cause look the it's like, it's, everything is green again. And, uh, there are plenty of flowers around, there are certain bugs buzzing around, lots of dragonflies, um, not so rainy as, like, other months, you have these, uh, these kites that are flying, which is just, like, it doesn't serve a purpose in the game, you don't get something out of the kites, they're just there, as, like, a nice little reminder of, like, hey, it's a nice sunny day here in Animal Crossing, you know what I mean, like, it's just a, a friendly reminder, like, oh, it's that time of year again, it's like May, and it's nice and sunny and, like, enjoyable to be outside and to run around and, you know, it's, it's like, the simplicity of it. And obviously Animal Crossing, like, that's one of the big appeals. This is nothing new. I'm not saying anything, you know, groundbreaking by acknowledging how peaceful and nostalgic and, um, you know, meditative uh, Animal Crossing is, but... I think that that's just like my take on it. Like that's these little things that are so insignificant, they kind of bring me back to the simplicity of childhood. And not just because I played Animal Crossing City Folk a lot when I was a kid, but just in general, like it, it just kind of brings me back to enjoying the small things and take and appreciating the little things in life. Um and stepping away from the monotony or, like, not so much stepping away from it, because, I mean, it's it's life, you know? It's working a job, or multiple jobs. Um, it just is what it is. You can't get away from it. It's how you pay the bills. It's how you afford to, you know, your electric bill to play Animal Crossing and the, <laughs> all the things. Um, but being able to escape from that monotony, if, even for a brief amount of time, and be like, oh, yeah. Like, at, at work, I'm just like, oh, I have this due on Friday. I have this due on... Tuesday, I gotta make sure this is done and this is all squared away before I go on vacation next week and blah 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 and all those types of things and make sure I'm changing my out of office email and whatnot. But then, like, at the end of the day, you can, like, on Animal Crossing, it's just like none of that, none of that exists. You you can just escape from that and just be like, oh yeah, it's so hard to be like, oh it's May. You know what I mean? Like, with all that other stuff in mind, oh, this has to be done by Friday, this has to be done by blah, 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 and then that Friday comes and you're like, whew, thank God. Thank God that week is gone. You know what I mean? But it's like, or or maybe May is a stressful month, or any month is a stressful month. For me, like, October is a month uh, at my different jobs. It's just like a hellscape. There's just so much going on, right? And it's always just like, oh, thank God October is over. But as a kid, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, I mean, I want to get to the end of October specifically, but also just, like, enjoying all, like, the, the 31 days of Halloween, or when I was a kid, it was, like, 13 nights of Halloween, I think, on ABC Family or whatever, but just enjoying, like, spooky movies and Halloween Town and all these different things, and then, like, now at some point, you're just like, oh, thank God, if we can get past October, I'll be, it'll be a godsend, right? And it's just, like, you're just waiting for time to pass. You're waiting for an entire month that you used to love for a multitude of reasons to just get over, like, get through it, you know what I mean? Um, like, I didn't, like, today, I worked both of my jobs, I had meetings all day, and, uh, and then I came home and I was like, I gotta record Animal Crossing Let's Plays for my YouTube channel that posts tonight. Um, probably, ne I definitely need to find a time earlier in the week to do these, and, uh, so I'm not doing them last minute, but regardless, um, at no point, at no point today, I don't think, uh, when doing all those things in the real world, was I like, hey, it's, it's May, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's May. Maybe I thought to myself, like, oh, wow, April's over already, holy crap, that went fast, now it's May. But I, but never did I was, was I just like, like, look at this, never, at no point was I like, let me just soak it in. 
Let me just soak in the fact that it's May right now. It's great. It's happy. It's what a time to be alive. You know what I mean? Like, but then I sign on to Animal Crossing, and suddenly it's like, that's exactly the reaction. <clears throat> I see some freaking fish kites up there, and suddenly I'm like, wow, it's almost summer, guys. Like, Memorial Day is coming right around the corner, and then it's summer. And you got, like, if you go on the, go to beach trips, or, like, just go to the pool, or whatever, whatever the deal is. I live on the East Coast, so I'm relatively close to the Jersey Shore. Uh, so there's that, that we, I try to make that trip every year. Again, life doesn't always allow it, but yeah, I mean, just slowing that, being able to slow down and, and acknowledge what's nice about each month, right? I think that allows you to slow down and kind of like take inventory on your life and just like not, <clears throat> not be just hoping for time to pass faster to get past certain crappy things in life. Or, like, things that just have to get done. But rather just, like, really being able to sit down and appreciate the time of, like, what it is. And, like, what's going on in the world around you. The good stuff. Um, the natural stuff, I should say. Not the, the man-made bad stuff. Um, although those kites are man-made. And those are pretty, pretty nifty. I do like me a kite. But I haven't flown a kite. Let's talk about kites now. I feel like that's as far as I'm gonna go on on that last tangent about nostalgia and and how great animal crossing is for both kids and adults <clears throat> um kids learn to do your chores just kidding i never learned to do that uh from animal crossing as a kid but um yeah i kites man i haven't flown a kite in for a long time. I do have a fun story about kites, though. When I was a kid, back to the Jersey Shore over the summer, um, when I was a kid, we were on the beach, me and my family, right? And uh, we were on the beach, and a, a freak, like, thunderstorm started rolling in, and we could, you know, when you're on the beach, uh, you can kind of see storms out, you know, over the ocean, like, from a distance, and you're like, ah... That's going to get us in about 45 minutes. We better start packing our stuff up and get back to the hotel or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, so we saw that coming in and it didn't seem like there was no like didn't really seem thundery or lightning. -y, didn't seem like an electrical storm or anything. Uh, it just seemed like a, a rainy day, I guess. Uh, I don't really remember the, the full scope of the situation. I just remember the one key moment of it. Um, but anyway, so we're, like, packing up our stuff, and it starts raining, I think, and I, I like, for some reason, I, I remember running, uh, and I think it was because it started, like, gently raining. It wasn't, like, a torrential downpour or anything, it was just, like, a gentle rain, um, but, you know, when you're on the beach and you start, it starts raining, you're just like, ah, get me out of here. So we started running back, uh, to the, to the hotel, and, um, there was some, there was some kind of kite- I don't want to say a kite convention, but there were like a bunch of people um, flying kites at that exact moment, right? Um, and at this point, you might be able to see where the story is kind of leading. Uh, there were a bunch of people flying kites, and it started raining. We packed it in. We started running back to the hotel like, ah, get out of the rain. Um, my dad and my sister, uh, I think, I, I can only assume since they weren't with us, like they were farther up ahead of us. Um... I can only assume that they were probably just like, oh, let's have a race, because they used to race on the beach. That was a thing. But it's not really important. Um, but, um, yeah, so I can only assume they were probably racing up ahead of us. Uh, and it was just me and my mom, and we were also kind of running, but not nearly at that pace. And then uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, there was like a crack of lightning, and it was right, right in front of us. Uh, and it struck a kite, right, out of the air. Um... And I don't, to this day, I don't remember how close it actually was. It felt like it was really close. Uh, I would say maybe, maybe one, 200 feet away. No, you know what? I, not even, I would say not even 100 feet away. Um, I'm thinking about measurements and like my, my foggy memory. It was like probably when I was like, I don't know, eight years old or something. Maybe not even that old. So it was a while. It was a long time ago probably like over 20 years ago. Um, so my memory of it is a little bit hazy other than the fact that it happened. 
but yeah, so it <laughs> the lightning struck this kite. It caught on fire, landed directly in front of us on the beach, um, scared the bejesus out of us, obviously. Um, but that's the last memory I have of a kite. I also got a really dope Yu-Gi-Oh kite uh, for one of my childhood birthdays. I remember that explicitly. Um, but I don't think I ever flew it. My parents, uh, were just not interested in taking me out to fly a kite, apparently. Or maybe I was just not interested in, like, I, I remember being fascinated by it. I was like, oh, a kite! This is so cool! And also, it was Yu-Gi-Oh! So, it was, like, extra cool. Um, but then I don't think... I don't think I remember actually ever flying it. I remember taking it out of the packaging and being really excited about it. But I don't think I ever flew it. And so, with that in mind, I, outside of uh, a kite being struck by lightning in front of me, I, I don't know if I actually have any real memories of flying kites. I think at some point on the same beach, not at the same time, but I think at some point, I, I, I had like the foggiest memory of like trying to learn how to fly a kite at some point in my like really early childhood. Um... But beyond that, I don't think I don't think I have any memories of flying kites. That's that's all of that to say that. Um, from mom. I just read the bottom line that says firemen are cute, and uh, I can already see that this letter's going to go off the rails. My dear John, I decided I could stand to lose a few pounds, so I started doing aerobics. What a fiasco! It's a long story, but your dad ended up calling the fire department. Firemen are cute. That, to me, is kind of rude. It's, it's kind of... You somehow lit the house on fire. Your husband had to call the, the fire department. And instead of being like, oh, I love him so much, he puts up with my nonsense, you say about how cute the firemen are? Bruh, mom, calm it's kind of rude, all right? Maybe maybe if he set the place on fire, you could be like, "Ugh, that fireman is cute." But not like when you're setting the place on fire. Like you got to take a step back and be like, "Ooh, <laughs> you know, reflect." If he set it on fire, go for it. Make the, make those kinds of comments. Be like, "I'm going to leave you for a fireman." But like when you're setting the things on fire, I don't think a fire would be, would be interested in you. I don't think you could. I don't think you could hack it with a fireman if you're setting the place on fire every week doing aerobics. That, that's not. Doesn't sound like uh, the type for a fireman. I mean, it'd be the fireman being around would be good for you, obviously. But I don't think. Uh, I think firemen are pretty uh, pretty adamant about fire safety. It's like. Uh, it's like telling Smokey the Bear that you, uh, you don't like putting out, I don't know, campfires effectively. I don't think that's going to impress him, is all I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think you lighting the place on fire doing aerobics is going to impress a fireman. But I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe firemen are impressed by women who find creative ways to light their houses on fire. I don't know. I think Glade, those like Glade and Febreze plug-in things, those are the uh, those are the go-to fire starters, I think. <laughs> <clears throat> but that also feels like a man thing. I don't know. I don't know how many women actually buy those. That feels very much like a ma a thing that was made for men who are like, "Oof, my place stinks, but I don't want to do anything about it. So let me just plug this this little thing into the wall, and uh, it'll spray." Febreze every every ten minutes, and I don't have to think about it. Uh, <laughs> that feels like an invention that was made for men. I think it was marketed towards like like uh, housewives, but I think it was I think it, that that was a product m made for men. I, I would say I could be wrong, but you know I think <clears throat> that sounds like a product that was made for men. I shouldn't generalize. I shouldn't say it's made for men, but I would say it's made for me. People like me. Um, although, don't tell my wife I'm saying this. She's in the next room. 
so I'll, I'll say it quietly. But I am I am the cleaning, the, the one that cleans and also the one that is cleaner in our relationship. It's fine, she hasn't watched my YouTube channel at all, so we're, we're good, we're so good. She'll never know I said any of this. <laughs> but it's true, it's 100% true. I'm not just saying that to, I'm pretty lazy, but when it, in, in a lot of ways. Uh, outside of work ethic, I'm pretty, you know, I work two jobs and do a YouTube channel and have my own businesses and what have you. So there's that. But I mean, as far as, as far as laziness goes, like I, when I'm home, I like to be lazy, but when I'm, um, when it comes to cleaning, I'm a bit OCD. That's actually, that's actually probably what it is. It's nothing to do with, uh, laziness on my part or lack of laziness on my part. It's just the OCD kicks in. I'm just like, this needs everything, um, a place for everything and everything in its place is, is my, my mantra. <clears throat> Um, which is why I'm also doing such a thorough job picking all these weeds, uh, because in the past I've let them go, and I don't want to do that anymore, because it looks like crap, and I don't like weeds everywhere. I think we're making some serious progress, though. I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna kill all these weeds, and, uh, I think next week we can actually focus on doing real stuff. I did dig up a bunch of fossils, though, throughout this this weeding expedition, so I think, uh... <clears throat> I think I just gotta get, like, muscle memory, like, from here on out, anytime I see a weed, just pluck a weed. See a weed, pluck a weed. Call it a day. Why is there a butter... Wait, why is there a butterfly on the side of my house? Oh, wait! Oh, snap! I'm just realizing this. Is that the butterfly from finishing my Critterpedia? Or the... <clears throat> the... Bug wing? Of the museum? I guess it would be probably my Critterpedia, right? So I'll, once I finish my... The fish portion, I'll get... A fish thing on the side, too? That's freaking sweet! I didn't know that was a real thing. Now I have to remember... I wonder if you get the same thing for fossils. Probably not, because those are f those are uh, museum things, right? Fossils, there's no Critterpedia for that. It's just the fossils being donated to the museum. Whereas, uh, I am lost. I do not know this town like the back of my hand. See a weed, pluck a weed. Oh yeah, and Gulliver's here. Oh god, there are more weeds. No. <laughs> no, I thought I cleared them all out. No. Tell me there are no more. Oh, but there is this. Just let me dig this up quick. There is Gulliver here. I do want to uh, maybe talk to Gulliver. I don't know. We'll see. Gulliver's not the most exciting person to talk to. It's pretty repetitive. Doesn't really give you that much very good stuff. I don't think I'm debt-free, though, so a, a thing from Gulliver that I could just sell right away uh, might be beneficial. <laughs> What's this? Oh, yeah, 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 I, wow, okay. Oh yeah, you know what? I did finish the fossil exhibit. I did finish the fossil exhibit because I was really excited about never having to mail out, um, never having to mail out fossils again. But now I have to go and mail out fossils again because money. Actually, I'll just sell them as they are. I don't care. That's not true. I care very much. Um, as far as art goes, I'm like nowhere in terms of progress on art, right? I think I have like one painting. Yeah. Oh, two. Okay. I've got two paintings so far. So this is going to be an art hunt uh, <clears throat> like you've never seen before. The bug wing should be done. Fish wing will be done once I'm... <clears throat> so then I'll be three-fourths, three-quarters of the way through. Um finishing my museum, but then it becomes a non-stop art hunt, which is what Animal Crossing New Horizons has become uh, for me. 
I like how Mint just tried to run with me and... Oh god, I forgot. There are more weeds up here. Alright, I forgot there are weeds that I didn't pluck up here. I think I plucked all these ones, right? This is probably just more up here, question mark? No. Apparently I plucked those that section, but not this acre. Okay, whatever. That's fine. As long as they're all gone, I don't care. Part of me also feels like I already paid off all my debt, but I'm not... I'm not 100% sure on that, quite frankly. <clears throat> I'm gonna sell all this. All these unappraised fossils, too, because I just don't care enough to get them appraised. It's probably really dumb of me, but... It is what it is. Do you have any art, by chance? No, you never have art, Nook. Crap. So I guess I'll have to start uh, doing like a, a daily thing for, uh, and maybe time traveling too, I don't know, to collect art then uh, in this game. But that's where we'll leave off. I'm not going to go see Gulliver. I don't really care to. Uh, let me actually run up and see how much I owe. I think you have to go to the, the post office here in this game. It's been a minute, but... I have like 70,000 <clears throat> 70, bells though, so... I think I go to Pelly. Deposit. <laughs> yeah, here we go. 518,000 bells. So yeah, we're definitely not out of the woods uh, on debt in this game. So let me do 70,000, I guess, right? I don't think there's anything really I'm saving up for other than paying off debt, so... That means you still owe 448,000. So we're under half a million bells, though. We're under half a million bells. We're really taking cracks at it. We're good. We're good. Um, so with that said, maybe I do go talk to Gulliver really, really quickly and uh, get whatever he's going to give me. Oh, actually, Gulliver in this game is kind of fun, right? I think he does trivia. I think he does like... Uh, all right, is it this one or is it Wild World or is it both... Or is it neither? Where Gulliver asks you about, um... Like, some kind of like, Oh, I am i don't know where I am, or blah blah blah. Can you help me figure out where I was? Here are some hints that describe the country I was in. <clears throat> Alright, where was he exactly? Guys, I lost Gulliver. He must have been in the earlier half? The, the leftmost half of the beach? <laughs> Crap. I am going to dig this up, though. <clears throat> Another gyroid. I think the gyroids sell for a good amount of money. Um, the fossils would if they were appraised, but I didn't get them appraised, so there's that. Alright, Gulliver, let's see how this experience pans out. And then I wake you up again, I should probably just put my shovel away so I don't have to... <clears throat> ...have the animation of me putting the shovel away and pulling out again. There we go. <laughs> Whoa, where in the... how did I get here? My boat, my crew, where have they all gone? Oh yeah, I was mopping the poop deck when I fell overboard. It gets so slippery. Wait, that means you must have rescued me. You kindly child. You benevolent, benevolent, benevolent. Uh, you benevolent beachcomber. I owe you my life. By the way of saying thanks, I think I'll tell you this great joke I heard overseas. Let's see, how did it go? Oh yes. Uh, so there's a duck, a husky, and a cougar. And the duck says to the husky, Wait a minute. How old are you again? Maybe I shouldn't tell you this particular joke. Lol. Wahahaha, why aren't you laughing? Oh, that's right, I never finished the joke. Well, since I can't tell you my joke, how about I just give you this instead? I bartered this off a seedy-looking merchant when I was visiting a far-off port town. 
You won't find another like it anywhere. At least, I don't think you will. You know, I'm just a rolling stone, never knowing where I'm going. Hmm, wait a sec. Maybe that's why I don't swim so well. Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is... The guys, my shipmates, they think that maybe if they tie me to the mast, I won't fall off the boat so much. So with any luck, uh, maybe I won't be washing up on your beach too often, at least not for a little while. Thanks for the whole saving my life thing. May your sails stay full and your socks stay dry. Okay, so it wasn't, it's not Gulliver in this game. Um, fishing bear. I wish he gave you art. I wish there was a better way of getting art than just buying it off of uh, Nook. It's fine. So that's what we'll call it for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. The weeds are gone for the most part, so uh, I'm sure there will be more next month or next week. Um, but at least we're, we're ahead of it this time. Now we're at a point where we can see a, see a weed and pluck a weed rather than having to spend an entire 30-minute episode doing so. Um, so next week, we will get back into the swing of things fully. Uh, we'll probably start looking at maybe artwork, we'll look at fish, see what fish are available, see if I have to time travel for any fish, maybe I'll do that off screen, so then when I sign on, uh, it'll be ready to go, the time traveling will all be ready, already be done, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see what we're looking at, and then of course art, uh, purchasing art and finding art is also going to be uh, one of the endeavors that we, we, uh, partake in from here on out here on the uh the let's play series so with that said thank you so much for watching if you haven't already make sure to subscribe ring the bell for notifications uh smash the like button below leave me a comment in the comment sections below and uh until next time i am the nintendo beast thank you so much for watching <laughs>